everyone, thank you for joining me today. I'd like to talk to you about art journaling and how to get started if you are a complete beginner. It can seem really daunting. People online are creating absolutely beautiful pieces of art in art journals, but where did they start? How did they get started? What is their art journal made from? What sort of paper do you need? Where do you find the embellishments? I'm going to answer all these questions and then at the end I'm going to lead you on to another video that helps you get started with my five step mixed media method. Now these are just a couple of examples of my uh, art journals that I've got here and they are both very different but we're also going to be starting to create an art journal from scratch as well if you don't already have one at home. Now this first one is from the brand Stamperia. So this is an art journal. It is created with a 300 GSM, like a watercolour paper, a watercolour cardstock. It's made for holding all of the different mediums that you're going to be using, um, the texture pastes and things like that. They are heavyweight papers. Now this one only has around about 20 pages, but I do like to add quite a bit of definition and depth to my pages so 20 pages is more than enough to know that I can still close it. This one has an elastic band to hold everything still as well but you can see already after only creating three pages in this I'm already sort of getting quite a bit of depth there. This one is a ring bound one. Now this one is an artist's sketchbook but it's actually again with watercolour cardstock. I find watercolour cardstock absolutely fantastic for having that weight that you need to hold those mediums. You can pick these up in artist stores, you can pick them up on Amazon. I'll try and link a few down below for you as well. Something like this with the rings at the top so you can easily flick through is ideal. But if you feel like you'd like to get started straight away and you don't have an art journal to hand, you can make your own using something like a notepad or even an old book. Now this book is one I picked up from a charity shop. It is damaged already, so it was one that they didn't even sell me. They just gave it to me. They were going to get rid of it. So uh, I'm quite happy using this as my art journal. Now I'm going to be removing a lot of pages, but this is then just giving me some ephemera to use, book pages to use in my pages to use as backgrounds, so I'm not worried about that. So the first few pages, I'm going to just uh, go past these because I'll probably just glue those together and that will be the front, they'll all be hidden. So these are things like the title, um, things like that, all of the credits and such, we don't want those. It's handy to have a clip, this bulldog clip is absolutely fine to hold pages out of the way whilst you're working. Now I'm going to create maybe around about 10 pages to start with that I can do my art journaling in. After that, once I start getting towards the end of those, I can start creating a few more. It takes a little while, but it's a good idea to do these in batches so it doesn't become too time consuming and you can get creating almost straight away. So I'm going to take a couple of pages. Usually I just take two if they're like this, if they're quite a good weight of paper, and I will glue these two pages together. Now I'm just going to use a glue that's something like book binding glue, a wet glue, but I'm not going to put it on too thick. I'm going to use a brush. And I'm just going to run a line around the edge and across the middle there, and then I'm going to brush that out with the flat head brush Make sure it's a really thin layer. And then I'm going to press the two pages together. Now with them two pressed together, I've got one thick page. While it's drying, I want to move it back and forth just to make sure that you've got that flexibility there and you haven't got any creases, wrinkles or bubbles. So now we've got a really sturdy page to work on. What I'm then going to do is take a craft knife Something I've found useful for making sure that you only cut through the right amount of pages is a metal shim or something similar that you can cut up against. The pages that I've cut away, as I say, can be used for ephemera, for your background, so definitely I'm keeping those. And then I'm going to glue the next two pages together, cut away around five and so on and so forth. I'm going to create around about 10 of these pages. So for now I've just got five pages so I can get on and show you the next stage. But as I say, I would normally do this in batches of around about 10. 
So now we need to prime our pages ready for putting our wet and heavy mediums on. And the best thing for this is a gesso primer. Now you can get this across multiple different brands. This is one of my favorite craft brands anyway, is Sizzix. So I'm going to be using this one. They generally come as white. You can get other colors as well. You can get clear, you can get black. I go with white because that will dull down the text on the book page, which means that it's then suitable for any theme that I want to put on there. And I'm just going to give this not a thick coat, but a thin coat of gesso. And it may well be that I can still see the uh, book page through. And that's absolutely fine because I quite like that texture in there. But I don't want it to stand out to the point where we're able to read the text too well. So I'm going to do a thin coat of the gesso primer over the back and the front of each one of my book pages. And for this, you may want to revert to a slightly larger brush to get coverage much quicker. Each page doesn't take long at all to dry. Now you can leave this to air dry for a few minutes before going on to the next page, or you could use a heat gun to just warm that up and speed up the drying process. Now, as you can see, that's one quite thin coat of gesso, and this doesn't usually suit me because I use lots of mediums, lots of water, lots of watercolour as well, inks and things. So I tend to put two coats of medium on here before I get started. Now, if you don't want to use that much in the way of wet mediums, one coat may well be more than enough for you. But also, additionally, if you're not keen on seeing the book print through, you can add a second layer. So I'm going to do it just to this one so you can see the difference with one and two coats. So there you can see the difference between one coat of gesso and two coats of gesso. And of course, you can carry on and do three or even four coats if you want, ensuring that it dries thoroughly in between. Now I've got some art journal pages that I can be working on. These are still a little bit damp, so they would need to dry a little bit longer but I've got a journal that I could be working in because essentially an art journal is really usually only for your eyes, for you to practice your uh, techniques, your layering, your colour combinations in and generally have fun. Um, now obviously once these are all dry I will remove the paper clip here and I would glue all of these pages together to make sure that they stay there and this would be my first page to work on. Now if you are going to be purchasing a ready-made book so something like this one which is a watercolour book this is actually an art journal uh, specifically or as I say watercolour cardstock on paper you don't need to gesso that necessarily some people prefer to I don't worry about it but a tip for you if you are going to be applying lots of mediums is between your pages when you're working on a page just in between just pop something a piece of paper even if it's just something like some tissue paper here so something thin underneath like so because that's going to protect your under layer from any leakages which obviously I didn't do on this page. Once you have your journal sorted so you've got your base sorted you need to start thinking about what are you going to put in your journal pages. Now the first place I like to go is around my house. I rummage around my house and find things laying around that I can use. So maybe that you've got things like threads, things like clothing tags, even old postage stamps are all perfect for adding colour, texture and different details to your art journal pages. If you are already a paper crafter, you may have things like some rubber stamps. So you can go through and pick out ones that you think will be suitable. I always think ones that just add texture are perfect. So whether it's wording like these ones, little shapes, um, ink splats, patterns like such, they're all perfect for your art journals, depending, of course, on the sort of style that you like to create. Then you're going to want to find some pattern papers. I like to purchase mine very often in themes, but again, things like book pages are absolutely perfect. Postcards, newspapers, magazine clippings, all of these are going to be ideal for cutting up and using in your art journals. When it comes to a focal point or an image, 
there's lots again that you could actually purchase already made there's tags there's ephemera there's things like insects butterflies these are fantastic paper dolls from tim holtz there's so many in there i think there's about 80 something in there all black and white images that will go with any color scheme but don't forget again especially if you're on a budget Things like family photographs, you could be copying and using these. If you've got a printer and a scanner, um, or you can print off from a digital photo, you can be using these in your projects as well and save yourself some pennies. Now, adding colour for me is a big thing because that's the reason I put all that gesso on my pages because I want to be able to put lots of mediums on there. And these will vary depending on the pages that I'm doing. These are just some of the mediums that I will use in an art journal. You may have some laying around your house already. You may want to start considering what sort of mediums you'd like to have a play with and purchase just a few. I would always say start with purchasing your primary colours because you can mix those into so many other colours as well. But we've got things like watercolours. We've also got watercolour concentrated inks and uh, these are reinkers for ink pads as well. So they are really saturated colour that you can water down. Acrylic paints, uh, things like oil paints as well will work. You've got spritzes and sprays in all sorts of different styles, different saturations of colour. Some have got mica, some have got shimmer. There's so many on the market. You've also got your basic coloured ink pads and things like colouring pencils or even alcohol colouring pens. It's entirely up to you how you choose to add your colour to your page and you can experiment and play with the different methods. As long as you've got an art journal where the pages are going to hold the wetness that you're going to be using. So how wet are the mediums that you're putting on? So now you're ready to start creating your first art journal page. You should have everything you need prepared to start playing and really do play. There are no rules. You can create different colours. You can create different styles, whatever suits you, because this is more about the journey and the act of creating than is the end result. There's a video just here that takes you through my five step mix media method that can get you started if you've never tried mixed media before or you find it quite complicated and quite confusing but also make sure you subscribe to my channel because there's going to be lots more art journal videos coming up very soon.